During this lesson, you will be required to fill out a worksheet. I recommend you read through the worksheet before viewing the lesson. In order to give you time to do this, you can use the pause button at the bottom of the screen. Learning outcomes. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to list the three different stresses acting on concrete lintels and use a sketch to illustrate your answer. State the joint finish that should never be used on a chimney stack. State the name given to the last flue liner placed on top of the stack. Describe how the last flue liner placed on top of the stack is held securely. List the two names given to the projecting course or courses of brick at the top of a stack. And state the name of the finish used on top of the stack and what two materials are used for it. List two factors that may affect the draw within a chimney. Stresses on concrete. Because gathering units are also acting as lintels, the concrete is being stressed in three different ways, and they are compression. As the weight is applied to the top of the lintel, the lintel is being is, is being forced uh, to bend, thus compressing the concrete at the top of the lintel. The second stress there is tension. And again, it's like the opposite of compression. The concrete at the top of the lintel is being compressed, whereas the concrete at the bottom of the lintel is being is in tension. It's like it's being torn apart or stretched. The last one then is shear. Okay, and so again as the force or the weight is applied to the top applied to the top of the lintel, the lintel will have a tendency to slip and break, or will be inclined to slip and break uh, where it's being supported on either side. And this is called shear. So again, the three stresses. The first one is compression. So this occurs in the top of the lintels where the load is pushing down, therefore bending the lintel. The concrete is being compressed together. Concrete is strong in compression. And so there's no need to counteract this at all. So we can see it's being compressed on top, the lintel is. The next one is tension. So this, uh, this usually occurs at the bottom of the lintels. So because, the bending action, uh, because of the bending action, the concrete is being pulled apart on the underside of the lintel. So concrete is weak in tension. Therefore, steel reinforcing rods must be placed at least 125 millimeters from the bottom of the lintel to counteract this tension. 25 millimeters is uh, the least amount of cover that the current, that the steel uh, reinforcing steel uh, uh, requires. Uh, this is to stop the penetration of moisture and uh, from, uh, to stop the bars from from rusting. The last one there is shear, and uh, this usually occurs. Uh, like I said earlier, where the lintels, where the lintel is being supported, because it cannot bend, the lintel may crack and slip. This may be counteracted by hooking the reinforcing rods on either end, as seen in this diagram here. The way the reinforced bars are hooked up on either side, on either side. Questions. List the three different stresses acting on concrete lintels and use a sketch to illustrate your answer. Chimney stacks. Due to the exposed nature of a chimney stack, it is essential that only quality materials are used and that the stack is built with great care. A recessed joint finish should never be used on a chimney stack as this would allow water to penetrate into the stack and also allow frost damage to occur on the stack. So the kind of uh, joint finish that we'd be looking for is either key jointed or weather struck. All chimney stacks, whether a single flue or a number of flues grouped together, should be built so that every flue is surrounded by at least 100 millimeters of solid block work and each flue must serve only one fireplace. 
As the flu liners are continued up through the breast and into the stack, it is normal practice to finish off the stack using a decorative flu liner called a terminal pot. Here's an example of a terminal pot opposite. Because of the exposed nature of the stack, the terminal pot should be bedded into at least three courses of brickwork. This will ensure that it is well secured into position and unlikely to be affected by wind conditions. Another decorative feature at the top of a stack is an oversailing or a corbel course. When an oversailing course is used, it is essential to weather it by using a sand and cement fillet on the projected brick on the projecting portion of the brick. This corbel course acts as a drip as well as being a decorative feature. Questions. State the joint finish that should never be used upon a chimney stack. State the name given to the last flue liner placed on top of the stack. Describe how the last flue liner, liner placed on top of the stack is held securely. List the two names given to the projecting course or courses of brick at the top of a stack. The top of the stack is then finished off with flanging. This is formed using sand and cement sloping around the terminal pot, which allows any rainwater to roll off the stack. A DPC should always be placed underneath the flanging. It is also common practice to use a precast concrete capping, which has the added benefit of having an overhang and a throated underside, which prevents the water from running down the stack. The height of the stack is essential for adequate draw within the chimney. The problem of a downdraft within a chimney can be overcome by ensuring that the stack is of adequate height as described in the building regulations, which we'll discuss in the next lesson. Also ensuring that the throat unit is not positioned too high from the heart, therefore between 600 and 750 millimeters from the top of the constructional heart. This will all help the draw within the chimney. Here we have a diagram of a terminal pot being securely placed into position. The terminal pot is bedded at least uh, three into three within uh, three courses of brickwork, and then we have adequate flanging on the top of the stack. Also, the flanging on the top of the stack should be approximately 100 millimeters thick. Questions. State the name of the finish used on top of the stack and what two materials are used for it. List two factors that may affect the draw within a chimney. In conclusion, three different stresses acting on concrete lintels are compression on the top of the lintel, tension on the underside of the lintel, and shear on either side of the lintel at the point where the lintel is being supported. Recessed joint should never be used on a chimney stack. The last flue liner placed on top of the stack is called the terminal pot. The terminal pot should be secured by bedding it into at least three courses of brickwork. A carbal course or oversailing course can be used at the top of the stack. 
Concrete or sand and cement flanging is used to weather the top of the stack. The height of the stack and the trout unit may affect the draw within a chimney.